Who is this? This is Saki. I'm going to show you how to mass produce these. Mask production. Okay, I know there's like a million mask making tutorials out there, but they're only showing you how to make them one at a time. We don't have time for that. I'm going to show you how to make a lot of these at the same time without pinning, without ironing, because ain't no one got time for that. Every single person needs one, and what's the world population? We got to make a lot. For a template, I've been using a letter size sheet of paper um, and I just lay it on the fabric and cut it out with a rotary cutter. If you're using scissors, you're going to be taking way too long. Get a pizza cutter. The pizza cutter can cut through eight layers of fabric at the same time. So after you cut your fabric out, separate the layers then fold them in half. Next, we're going to sew together the sides while pleating them. Don't bother pinning it in place. Just pinch a pleat with your fingers and move it under the presser foot. Don't bother cutting the thread in between masks. Just move on to the next one. We'll cut them later. We'll separate them later. This is going to save you so much time and thread. Next to the other side, try to line up the pleats with the other side's pleats. Okay, now you can separate them. They should look like this when you're done. Okay, moving on to binding. I highly recommend you buy pre-made bias tape, otherwise it kind of takes forever. Have your bias tape on the dispenser, like a mic stand, because you're going to use a lot of it and you're going to use it really quickly. If you can't find pre-folded bias tape, you can get regular bias tape. And there's a nifty tool, it folds it for you, and I'll show how to use that also. So now we're going to insert those pleated edges into the binding tape, into the bias tape. So just wedge them in there and start sewing. Again, don't cut in between. Just put them one put them in one after another. When you're done, you should have some Tibetan flags. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. If you did everything correctly, you should have a suspension bridge of sorts. Now go ahead and separate the rungs of your ladder. Ta-da! Alright, now we're going to work on the ties. Start off with the usual forward, backward, forward stitch to anchor it in place and make a string out of your bias tape. It's not super important to measure out the length of the tie. You just want it to be approximately that long. Long enough to go around the head and tie. You don't actually need to get a ruler. You just need to use some sort of reference point. For me, it's the height of my sewing machine plus about a decimeter. So now I know it's time to enter the mask. So insert the first corner and anchor it down with a few stitches. Then insert the second corner and then pull both the fabric and the bias tape taut to make sure the edge is wedged into the bias tape. Use that same measuring technique for the length of the second tie. When you get to the end, fold in the bias tape so there aren't raw edges sticking out and just stitch over that. And then don't cut the thread. Just start the next mask. Just start the next one. Measuring the tie length by eye is not the most accurate. You'll notice that my tie lengths aren't exactly the same length. The trade-off is that it's super fast. No one's going to notice if your mask isn't perfectly symmetrical. So let's see that entire process again at 4x speed so you don't get bored. When you're done with that, you can finally separate your ties. Don't get OCD about it. Okay, and as promised, this is how you work with bias tape that's not pre-folded. So you treat this pretty much the same as normal double-fold bias tape, but you're going to fold and press it as you go. So while the tape is anchored under the sewing machine's presser foot, pull your little tool back toward you to establish the crease pattern, then run your fingers down the tape to crease it. Then pinch the tape in half and run your thumb down the groove to establish the centerfold. Finally, use your fingers to iron it out a few times before you proceed. So now you are fully prepared to make masks for everyone and their moms, especially their moms. Alright, see you next time. This hospital gown blue is my most popular color, and I don't understand why, because 
for the first time in your professional life, you're allowed to choose whatever color you want. People choose to be boring. I think people just want to be inoffensive. They're really considerate and they don't want to hurt other people's eyes. But now's your chance to hurt people's eyes and have it be justified. You'd be like, I'm just, I'm just trying to wear my PPE, okay? Sorry if it's tacky. <laughs>